Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Awesome Cast. This is John. We're bringing you an awesome interview here. In, we're, we're recording this just after Thanksgiving. We'll be bringing this to you probably, hopefully, sometime within the holiday season. Maybe not. I don't know. I, I'm not in charge of that. Today's interview is going to be really special for me and, and I hope for everyone else as well. Today's guest is not just someone who's very accomplished, multi-talented and someone that whose work I've been a fan of for a very long time. It's also someone that through the years has become very important and special to me personally. So I'm really excited to to bring this person to you and, and let you get to know them as well. But uh, Kira Vincent Davis, Kira, thank you so much for joining. Thank you. We we just saw you had, I usually ask us, you know, like what, what have they been working on? But you just had an announcement recently, if I remember correctly, right? With it with Sentai. Yes. Uh huh. For Love Flops. I'm so playing Lauren. Yeah. The cutest little rabbit shaped alarm clock. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, it's a really cute show. You should check it out. Yeah. I think, I think they'll be on High Dive as well. I think I saw. So I think so. Yes. Yeah. So please, please check that out. Check out everything she's in. Uh, she is always fantastic. Oh, thank you. But you know, this is this is gonna be a little different for me because I've I've known you for a while now. But we're we're gonna we're gonna kind of do this, you know, a little bit by the book that you know my usual interview style. So one question, I, I'm not sure if I've ever asked you this, but what made you first take an interest in acting and and in performing? Because I know you do music and and other things as well. Well, that goes back to when I was a kid. I don't know if it's just because my mom was an actor. And she was an opera singer and she got us really into that stuff, you know, lots of different kinds of music. And so, yeah, I started off in elementary school in some school plays and then it just kind of grew from there, both my brother and I. Um, and yeah, it just kind of grew from there. And uh, then one day I saw on the, it was a local paper called the Public News, and I saw there was a cattle call for actors um, for anime. And so that's how I got started in anime. Yeah. Mm. Had, had you watched any anime at that point, or were you just like, well, I don't know what the hell this is, but I'm going to try it out? Yeah. We used to go across town to this place called Audio Video Plus, which is not around anymore, but these were the days of. These were still the days of video rentals. And um, there was this one place that had all kinds of obscure stuff. Like his, it was anime was a little more obscure at the time, yeah. as you know. And um, so, yeah, I'd go there and rent stuff like, you know, Project Aco and Bubblegum Crisis and, you know, the old Bubblegum Crisis and, you know, Akira and all those old classics. And they had, you know, foreign films and, um, all kinds of, you know, quirky stuff that you couldn't find anywhere else. So yeah, I was, uh, and then there was the stuff that we watched on TV, like uh, Robotech and Voltron and um, Speed Racer and all that. Yeah, uh, all stuff that that's very close to my heart, stuff that I watched growing up as well. So it's, it's kind yeah. of fun to hear you talk about that. Yeah. Speaking of Robotech, I, I'm just going to do some connect the dots here because we, we talked about this not too long ago like but you actually got to work with with carl masek i did which was awesome because uh you know remember seeing his name in the credits of robotech when i was a kid i never thought that one day i'd be able to that i would be working with him yeah like that's, yeah, that, that, that was really cool yeah that that's just a crazy life is weird <laughs> Life is yeah. weird. So it's it's really cool, like some of the things that, that just you get to do sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And that was that was one of those things for sure. Yeah, and that and that show was kind of weird too, because it didn't start out as as an ADV show. I forget who who originally published it, but um something like that, or do I have it wrong? I'm not sure. Yeah, I can't remember. You know what you know I should remember this because 
we actually recorded an episode and at the time of this recording that recording has still not gone up so, so uh, okay <laughs> so some you know somewhere at some point in the future people people are going to be able to listen to that where i actually know what i'm talking about and i did my research and had it in front of me <laughs> <laughs> and then and then go on and and uh listen to this as well so um <laughs> <laughs> crying freeman was a wild show oh yeah yeah crying freeman yeah there was that one and that was carl masick uh directing that too and then um what else was it so we also <laughs> worked on aura badler dunbine yeah and yeah and and i played cam foul the little fairy and and yeah that was cool uh i i don't know if you you know because you're in the booth you're just you're just recording your scenes right you're just doing your line but if you ever, uh -huh. you know if you ever have the chance kira because you're you're a big music fan big musician the but the, the but the theme song for or Ban battler dunbine is a fucking banger it's a <laughs> banger for an anime theme it's got, <laughs> like it, it starts out with like this big bass solo and then the trumpets come in and it's fucking great oh that's awesome I yeah. have to listen again. It's been so many years since I heard it. You know, yeah, like another good one is the intro to Super Gals, the show Super Gals. <clears throat> they had the coolest opening theme ever. Also, 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 and I promised myself I was going to bring this show up sometime during the interview. And this is my this is my my spot. I'm going to take my shot. Nagica, <laughs> Nagica had oh, a great yes, fucking Nagica intro. It's so much fun. <laughs> I loved working on that. Um, it's like, you know, she's like a female James Bond, you know, and and with panties everywhere. Yes, <laughs> yes, it was such a weird and show. It's, it was it's a good a show, show though. Cool. We had such a blast working on that with Monica <laughs> as uh, as Leela. Yes, the human. Hit. <laughs> you had to, you had just like, here's here's the thing, like I think. One thing that goes unappreciated about you is like you've had so many different. I, I want to articulate this properly. When I say that you you have a lot of voices, I'm not talking about like you're you're putting on a goof. Like you you had like your your boy character, your Osaka from Azumanga Dayo kind of <laughs> country character. Mm -hmm. But Najika was like her own thing. I don't think I've ever hear you, heard you do a voice like that before or since. It was it was a little and, different. Well, you know, sometimes it just what it takes is someone being open minded enough to kind of give you that shot. Yeah. Because, yeah. Um, you know, I I think actually David Williams, who directed it, he even told me afterwards that you know he was he was surprised by that. Um, you know, and I think he auditioned everyone and it just, I don't know, you just see the character and the voice comes out just seemed like, you know, just seemed like what fit. And yeah, I had never done anything like that before. It was super cool. Um, a lot of times you end up getting kind of typecast, you know, you yeah. have some of the same, like when you have the same group of directors, you know, sometimes they kind of start thinking of you as you're going to be this character. You know what I mean? You're going to be yeah. this type of character. I mean, it's a little bit lazy, but you know, but yeah, you know, and I'm and I'm not complaining because I get some great characters, but then it's like, you know, this one's wildly different and it just worked out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I guess you're right, yeah, I haven't really played a character like that since then. And I, I feel I've always felt like, man, we, we need to go back to that. Cause that was that was uh... I know. I mean, but has there been another character like that i mean so. not not in the last 20 years i don't know if we yeah, can right? <laughs> like can we even do that now can we do nagica in 2023 I mean, oh well yeah i don't know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i don't know uh, but i also love spy stuff like especially recently i've got into to, to watching things about spies espionage and stuff so that and, and mysteries so yeah it Make Najika season two, you cowards. I know. It would be so cool. But... <laughs> I'd I'd sign up for it. I'd be I'd be there. Take my I'd money. Too, but somehow I doubt that it'll happen. Yeah, I'm hell well. Glad you appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I am I am the world's number one Najika fan. And that's, that's Oh, that's awesome. That's great to hear. Like, well, me and, and my best friend growing up, um, 
we used to just have lots of fun showing that to our friends. Like, like we just we just be at a party. Like there'd be a party at our house, and and we'd look at each other and be like, "Hey, let's put on Najika," and we just play a game. We'd put on the first episode, and we tell everybody, "Any shots?" <laughs> yeah, just just pick out a pixel on the screen and see how long you can go without panties showing up on your pixel on the screen. And and it's like in the first five minutes, everybody gets wiped out. <laughs> you know, it's 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 a real short game, but it's it's a yeah, lot of fun. Yeah, they probably won't last very long on that game. <laughs> no, you you just you, everybody everybody gets nailed in five minutes. It's fantastic. It's a lot of mini shots. <laughs> yes, a lot. Yes, and the, and the and the set came with a free pair of panties. Yeah, it's a did. free pair of white cotton panties that said Nautica on them. Yes, and I remember I put them on my head. I took a picture with them a long time ago. I don't know where what happened to that picture, but. You know, as you do when you get a, a a nice new pair of panties in a box set. Yeah, yeah, as I would, as anyone, as any rational person would. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, I, I want to switch gears a little bit. Who would you say has had the biggest impact on your career? Oh wow, who has had the biggest impact on my career? You mean like in the business? Um, it could be that, or it could be someone that's been supportive of you. Just, you know, like someone that that you feel like really, you know, made a difference and helped you. Oh, boy. You know, I have to say that John Swayze is an excellent mentor, you know, and has been a great mentor and friend to me for a long time now. So, I mean, it's really hard to pick one person. There's been a lot of great people, but I think he is very helpful, especially new actors. And even if you've been around a while, he's a great mentor. You know, he he mentors a lot of people, you know, can give you advice and things like that. So, yeah. And then I always have to be grateful to Matt Greenfield because he's the first person that ever gave me a job in, in anime. And so, you know, that is what it is. You know, everything I got is because because Matt Greenfield hired me for the first time. So, it's fantastic. Yeah, cross off on your bingo card, uh, Gendo Ikari, nice guy. Huh? Uh, just for the li- just for the listeners at home, you know, John Swayze plays Gendo Ikari in Evangelion. Uh, everybody knows I'm a oh, okay. giant nerd when it comes to that show, and a lot of others, but, but especially Evangelion. And uh, his character is just famously an asshole. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, the the idea of of, of the character, you I know, the actor that playing him that. being like this really nice supportive encouraging guy is just like diametrically opposed off to, face, right well, yeah. I mean, that's a good actor for you you know exactly mm-hmm. and they say that about the guy from uh that played joffrey from game of thrones that he's supposed to be like the super nice guy oh yeah like it, at least yeah. at least with with john swayze like it's his voice yeah it's like, just his voice yeah but yeah the, the actor like joffrey he's yeah. got a He's got to go through life looking like that. Like he yeah, can't yeah. fucking escape that. It's like he's so bad that when he dies, you're so you're happy. <laughs> yeah, if Derek dies, you're happy. <laughs> yeah, no, like I've never been through a show where I'm like, oh god, can he please just die already? Oh, exactly. Yeah, same here. I think we all felt that way. Yeah, yeah, a whole nation, you know, was united against yeah, Joffrey you know, yeah, being that's everybody being alive. united against. Yeah. You know, that, was, that was the closest we had to social unity in this country and it's all gone to hell since right well something to unite over yeah yeah what for you has been the biggest challenge as an actor in terms of just the acting itself because i know there are there are a lot of challenges that go outside the profession but but just uh you know just the actual Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, um, something that took me kind of a long time t- to get down, um, uh, believe it or not, is prolonged hysterical or maniacal laughter. Yeah. Uh, yeah, when I first started, that was really hard for me. Um, it, it took me a while. Now I can do it, no problem, I'm like second nature. But that that took a little while. And you know, I think just overall growth um, as an actor, um, I, you know, I, I did theater and uh, 
I participated in one show where it was about six months worth of rehearsals and it kind of was this experiment in um, studying Meisner method acting. And, you know, I can say honestly that I'm not a big fan of Meisner method acting, but for having studied it, I feel like it did make me better. You know yeah. how sometimes like, you know, even in music that you, you have to learn the rules to break them. Yeah. And think Meisner makes the rules, but, but it's, um, but I do feel like that really helped me become a better actor. So I think it's just, it's, you know, subtle things over time, you get stronger, you keep, you keep doing what you do and you get better. You know, and and some of those things it takes takes a few years, takes years to get better at. Um, <clears throat> but you know, over time, you do become stronger and better at it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, and I've definitely no. <laughs> heard. <laughs> I've definitely right. heard like some of the evil maniacal laughter and and some of the things that you've done. Um, I call me got kill immediately comes to mind. Because I remember the first time I saw that show and I was like, oh my God, how how did she like not die recording some of those lines? Because because uh Akame got killed. Um, oh yes. Yeah. Um yes. I love Sarah too. Okay, I know she's horrible. I know she's a complete bitch, but I love her. <laughs> she was so much fun to play. And I remember just this one like there's a scene where she um i think it's right after she you well, I, I don't want to give away spoilers but you know something but, happens and um she's uh she goes from this maniacal bit of laughter into this kind of crying it's kind of like <clears throat> hysterical crying combined with hysterical laughter and i just loved that that was you know it's just it's so cool and i honestly think at the beginning of my career i wouldn't have been able to pull off something like that you know um just so crazy and and you know i told you about the laughter and everything yeah. but yeah she's uh she was really great yeah a like lot. yeah i think that really does though demonstrate just like the work that that you that you put into your craft oh yeah yeah i mean and it takes a lot of practice you know just a lot of repetition a lot of doing it over and over again you know built up my lung power <laughs> yeah so yeah so it's not a problem now and it's one of my favorite things to do it <laughs> you know I, I i'm just thinking like there's got to be social situations where that's handy right you just you know you're like you know you know what i'm out of here let me break out the maniacal laughter everybody will just think i'm crazy <laughs> they don't want anything to do with me I should try that next time I'm at the gym and I want a piece of equipment, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just, so just stare them. Yeah, just stare them dead in the <laughs> eye. Right. Dead ass in the eye and start doing some evil maniacal laughter and see how long <laughs> it takes them to get the hell out of there. Yeah. It'd be funny just to see people's reactions. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know what? Yeah. Uh, Free, free, because we're friends. Because we're friends, I, I'm gonna give you a million dollar idea for free. You know, just whole YouTube channel about you just maniacally laughing at, at strangers. You know, at the at the gym, at Walmart, wherever. You know, just <laughs> just, just you hey, know, that's kind of a great idea. Yeah, I'm trying to get arrested. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, there's. There's no law against maniacal laughter. No I don't law think. against maniacal laughter. That's right. I think that I think that's know. protected speech. You never know. Somebody might feel threatened by you. You know, hey. <laughs> that's that's protected speech. We'll we we can we can get the ACLU to go to bat to you for that. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Got to protect our rights protect for uh, maniacal, maniacal laughter. Speech. That's right. Uh, I. I <laughs> after resisting here, just to go into some real dark political shit, but uh, anyway. <laughs> we'll we'll save we'll save that for when we're not rolling. So one thing I, I I like to ask actors because it's such a competitive field. What keeps you motivated? Because it's it's like it's hard. Uh, I and you know oh, yeah. I, it, it just I empathize with it because it's it's just like such a grueling profession to be in. Oh, absolutely. 
yes, the business side of it completely sucks for me, you know, in, yeah. in my, but you know what? It's the love for what I do. It's because is I absolutely fucking love. Uh, can I say that? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. If, fuck yeah. I've, I've said, I've said fuck at least five times already. Oh okay, yeah. I thought so. Um, but yes, I, I, I fucking love what I do. I'm very passionate about what I do. Um, and that's what keeps me doing it. All right. We're, we're, we're going to have some fun here. What are some of your interests outside of acting? Music. And I love weightlifting I've really gotten into that big time in the, about the last five years or so. Yes. 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 Yeah. And I have my fur babies and I don't know if that's really a hobby, but you know, I take care of them. Yeah. But yeah. How much are you, are you, uh, are you lifting these days? Uh, okay. So my PRs, you talking about all time PRs? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Just. So I think my all-time PR on the deadlift, it's not that great, but it's about, I think, 205 pounds, <clears throat> somewhere around there. My squat, I I think I, I got a little over my body weight, actually. Uh, my PR was 135. And then um, for leg press, I can do, um, I've done, what, 280 pounds. And bench press, I got to about... 110 yeah, so, yeah. I, for I mean, for con for context for those listening at home um i know better than to ask a woman her weight but uh <laughs> kara is not a large human being <laughs> well yeah and it's kind of you know what's amazing is that i didn't know i could do this yeah when i first got into this this was about i i started seriously working out in february uh, about a month after my mom passed away and was it 2000, 2019 and um you know I just went in thinking okay you know I haven't worked out in a while and I really need to get in shape and I worked with a trainer um I got talked into working with a trainer and you know I and I'm glad I did I'm so glad that I did because I learned how to work out properly and he threw a whole bunch of weight on the bar and said okay lift this or and squat this and I'm going to spot you. I never, I never would have thought about lifting that much weight or even think that I could before then. And so when I started to do it and I, and I got, and I did it more, it, it was, it's amazing. It's amazing what your body can do, you know, that you can actually, you know, put your body weight on your back or, you know, lift a lot more than your body weight when you're deadlifting or leg pressing. And, you know, and I'm so so grateful for that because uh you know like i said i never would have thought i never even would have entertained the thought that i could do that yeah and I feel like it's physical and mental you know what i mean it, it it helped me so much physically and mentally where i got this is there's something that comes with that that you know where you you're doing something you never thought that you could do that gives you this kind of confidence or for me it did that i didn't really have before and now I just enjoy the hell out of it. My my uh, trainer read me pretty well. And he said, you know what? I think you like this. I think that you're into this. So 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 I trained with him for a year. And then COVID happened. And then I had to, uh, I worked out at home for a year. And then before I went back out, got a membership. But yeah. Yeah. And again, I, I think that that speaks to just the determination and dedication that you have, that you bring to all the things that you do, because it, it, I just see it in you time and time again. It's just like, okay, you know, she's, she's latched onto this. She's not, she's not giving up, you know, oh, that's, that's you. something I've always admired about you. Thanks. Absolutely. Well, Kira, I've, I've exhausted my questions for now. I uh, have loved just being able to, to sit here and talk with you. And it's been and so great to talk to you. Let me tell you guys, John is the shit, okay? <laughs> He's the shit. He's awesome. <laughs> Somebody's got to talk you up, right? Because you're always talking everyone else up. I I appreciate that. I do. I I I do. I do need. <laughs> I do need talked friend. up sometimes, like everybody else. <laughs> well, Kira, thank you again, and and this has just been positively wonderful. Yes, for sure. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to yet another production 
of the Awesome Cast, your podcast for everything awesome. You can find us online at awesomecast.com, O S M C A S T dot com, or you know, wherever you find your podcast, just search for Awesome Cast. You can also find us on the social medias, Awesome Cast at Twitter or on Facebook. Of course, you can also find our wonderful interview guru, the greatest living interviewer, John Robbins at J5 is Live. Or perhaps you'd like to follow our amazing editor, Anna, at Angel Dark Fire, or just me, at It's Basil Time on Twitter. Our theme song is produced by DJ Inabito, and you can find him online at djinabito.com. And once again, thanks for listening to the Awesome Cast. We appreciate you. <laughs>